Has anyone noticed how bad of a fight this actually was? Look at this. Watch his two weapons. And now he has one. Where did his other weapon go? It literally disappeared. And things like this happen over and over in this fight, and I'm gonna sit down and see if I can find each one. I don't know if you're a big Star Wars fan like me, but even if you aren't, chances are you've heard about how bad of a movie The Last Jedi was. And I mean on so many levels it was fundamentally bad. I've made countless videos talking about this movie and the few things I liked and the many I've disliked, but I've never talked about what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to watch the throne room fight scene from The Last Jedi and pick apart every single huge error that made it to the big screen. This was one of the most intense scenes from all the sequels, but it's a shame how many errors you miss when you're not paying attention. All of the prequels had amazing fights choreographed by the same stunt coordinator where the actors all practiced relentlessly for weeks to get the routines perfect. But when you cut to today, and every single fight we've gotten in the sequels was subpar at best, and the one that looked better than most was simply discredited by how many common sense errors that were in it, after the first viewing it's just never the same. Now you might be wondering, how on earth could this fight be actually this bad? The coordinator that did this fight also choreographed the bathroom fight scene in Mission Impossible and that one wasn't garbage, so why does this one suck? Why wouldn't they just hire the same stunt coordinator from the prequels to do the awesome fights for this trilogy too. Now that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes so make sure you watch until the end of the video so you don't miss anything. And don't forget I'll be here making fun videos for you guys every single week. By subscribing you can stay up to date on all the latest movies and theories that everyone's going to be talking about. All you have to do is go down and hit that red button that says subscribe and you'll become part of this community that's filled with tons of people that love to talk about the same things that you love to talk about. I've got some other great Star Wars videos coming out soon that you're not going to want to miss so make sure you subscribe. Now at face value, this looks like a sick fight. This fight was meant to look theatrical. The first time I saw it, my eyes were big and I was just taking in as much as I could. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars since as long as I can remember, and one of my favorite parts about the movies is the lightsaber fights. When I was little, I wanted to grow up and be a Jedi. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Every day I would wake up and run outside and fight my little brothers or my best friend that lived next door with a lightsaber. And I had the pleasure of meeting the stunt coordinator for the prequels, Nick Gillard, and what an amazing job he did. The prequels had some of the best lightsaber fights we've ever seen. The fight between Maul, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon was the coolest thing in the entire world to 7 year old me. And the fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin on Mustafar, one of the most beautiful fights that most definitely brought a tear to my eye more than once. It's so incredibly emotional to see these two go head to head, and the music is just over the top. One of my favorite scores alongside Duel of Fates of course, but what I'm trying to say is, Star Wars is known for its over the top, incredibly well done lightsaber fights. If not anything else, that's what we go to the theater for. The fights in the prequels were literally like dances, and well, with the sequels they're all kind of like, meh. I've never found myself wowed or had any one of them come close to how good any of the prequel fights were. I'm pretty sure there was more than once where I flat out rolled my eyes during these fights. They were subpar at best and all I wanted was just one good lightsaber duel. I wanted one lightsaber fight that I would want to come back and watch over and over and over again and just love. I wanted to get that giddy feeling in my chest when I'm watching something awesome and sadly it just never came. Here, I'll show you how excited I was watching these fights while you subscribe. Don't worry, you won't miss anything. And we're back! That was literally me in the theater with how disappointing some of these were. There's just too many things wrong with this fight when you actually pay attention, which is really sad. All the guards, which, come on, why does Snoke need guards with melee weapons? But the whole fight, they were just all like, I'll try spinning, that's a good trick. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're just executioners that Snoke keeps around to put on a show for him occasionally, but the way they fight Kylo and Rey just doesn't make sense. So many unnecessary twirls and spins when they could easily strike down our heroes, and they just pirouette and then spin their weapons around like they're trying to miss them. Look at this! Where are you swinging? This guy has a completely clear shot of Kylo's head and torso because for some reason Kylo just stuck his lightsaber in the ground, and the guard chooses to go low and just hit his saber in the ground. Did any of you have lightsaber fights with those hard plastic lightsabers when when you were little, those things hurt. When you swing, you swing to hit your friend's lightsaber because if you hit them in the head, they're actually gonna get hurt and you're gonna get in trouble. Well, that's what these guards are fighting like. It looks like they just used a dress rehearsal take where they were going easy on Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver, but apparently they did 25 takes until it was perfect and then they high-fived. They all high-fived. I mean, where's the dedication and precision that the fights in the prequels had? Like, come on. So real quick, right off the bat, slight little air before the fight, why does Rey's lightsaber get super long out of nowhere? Okay, look, the tip is behind his left wrist in this shot, it goes from wrist to wrist, and then a split second later, her lightsaber is huge now. 
fight hasn't even begun yet and we're off to a great start. Now my favorite thing to do during big fights is to watch the background to see what other people are doing. Like do you remember the fight in the arena on Geonosis? That was one of my favorite battles just because there was so much going on. Each time I would watch it, I would watch a different Jedi fighting droids in the background and each time you could find something new. Here's a Jedi that's stomping on a droid's body in the background and what? Look at this! There's a Jedi fighting with two lightsabers right here. That's freaking awesome! I've never actually seen that before until just now. That's so cool. But you get what I mean, right? There's so many awesome moments and moves hidden in the details, but then when I did it for the throne room fight scene, all I saw were a bunch of people spinning in circles for no reason. There's so much going on, yeah, but it's utter nonsense. It's just to look pretty and have flow. When you stop and look, everyone's just derping around doing their own thing. I, I don't understand what happened. The stunt coordinator that did the choreography for the fight, like I said, did this bathroom fight scene in Mission Impossible, and it's one of my favorite hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes I've seen in a long time. It's such a beast of a scene. I just don't get the big decrease in quality. It's almost as if the director told him how to do it, and the stuntmen all just had to kind of go along with it anyway. I mean, just pick one person and focus on them. Any one of them. I don't know what they're doing, and you just can't unsee this once you notice it. I mean, look at this guy. First off, Ray's fighting off five, and Kylo's fighting three. How does that make sense? So he has the honor of striking first and their weapons clash and then Ray leaves to block another strike on the other side and the first guy that we were watching gets thrown back. Ray didn't push him but he flails off and has to stop himself from sliding back. And then while Ray's fighting off his four buddies, instead of just attacking while her back is turned to him, he decides to spin. A complete 360. And lucky for him, Ray still has his back to him and he literally has a clear shot to the head. There's no way he can mess this up so let's see what he does. It's a swing and a miss, right over her head like he wasn't even aiming for her. You know what? Where does this blade even go? What was he aiming for? His friend? He hit his friend. I, I don't get it. But okay, okay. He's in a good spot now. Ray's lightsaber is on the ground, and all he has to do is cut back to her head. Even if she raises her lightsaber, his weapon would still be in between her lightsaber and her chest. She'd have to use the force to stop him. Everyone deserves a second chance, right? All right, he can't miss again. Let's see what he does. He spins away. What? Why did you just do that? How did the stunt coordinator or the stuntman himself not go, huh, that's a little weird. It's almost as if I'm not actually trying to hit her. You know what? I bet I know what it is. Maybe he just can't see. Look at his helmet. There's no visor to see out of. What if these guys are the equivalent of the stormtroopers from the original trilogy? For three full movies, hundreds of troopers shot at our heroes nonstop, and not once did they kill any of them. What if these guards are the stormtroopers for this trilogy? Maybe they're so bad because they can't see out of their helmets. Maybe this is genius. Maybe they're blind and they were told to spin so they're harder to hit or it confuses the enemy or something. I don't know. Maybe that's why these elite guards can't win a five on one fight with this newbie who just found the lightsaber the other day. I mean, a few times, she almost hits Kylo with her lightsaber in the back of the head. Kylo goes on a streak of elbowing and kicking a few while he's holding the deadliest handheld weapon in the universe. I mean, maybe use that. You're not using it to block someone else or anything. Just hit them. Wait, why on earth are either force users not using the force? This should have ended before it began. Kylo should have waved his hand and frozen everybody in place and then just nonchalantly meandered around the room effortlessly killing everyone. Why are these two powerful force users struggling to fight some random ballet team with no real skill and certainly no force abilities? I would say Rey could struggle fine, but Kylo has been training with the force for, what, 15 years now? And in the next movie, Rey's the most OP we've ever seen. She's able to literally just fly now, so like, Rey gets some blame here too. Shouldn't a well choreographed fight between two force users in the Star Wars universe include some kind of force powers? A simple push or a pull or a mind trick or even just a little force choke? Why can't we get a little force powers? Kylo goes from freezing a blaster bolt in midair to struggling with a few blind mice. I'm pretty disappointed not one force power was used this whole fight. And how on earth does this weapon even wrap around a lightsaber? How could it hold energy? Because it's energy too? I don't get it. These physics don't apply to our world. We have no idea how they work. These are Disneyverse physics just like ramming a cruiser into this massive spaceship and everything in the area just disintegrates. I don't get it. But nonetheless, Ray's lightsaber is caught in this guy's whip thing, his head is exposed, and he can't use his weapon to block. If you just lean your lightsaber forward, you could hit him in the head and kill him while in the process of getting your lightsaber out of his whip. Did you forget about the off switch? Oh yeah, silly me. Something's wrapped around your lightsaber. Why don't you just try turning it off and then on again? That should do the trick. Then you can laugh when his whip hits him in the face. Meanwhile, this one guard willingly throws his weapon away so Kylo can run him through. 
what? I don't get this. The guy that runs in to block Kylo's saber with his hands is so pointless. There's no reason. He wasn't trying to attack Kylo. He went straight for his weapon. But he wasn't protecting anybody either. His buddy wasn't about to get decapitated or anything. He just runs in for no reason and... What'd you look at that? Now their armor is tough enough to block a lightsaber. It has selective effectiveness. It works when it wants to. It'd be funny if he just ran up to it and went to block his saber and then the lightsaber just went right through his arms and cut them both off. But no, it works now. Then there's Kylo wanting to be choked. Kylo's apparently trying to prevent the guard from choking him out by pulling the staff away from his throat. But when the guard takes his hand off the weapon, Kylo just sits there holding it to his throat like he wants to be choked. All right, let's check in on Rey. She's finishing up with this guy who's fighting with two vibroblades or whatever they are. And look, I must have missed it, but this guy clearly just sliced Rey's stomach. How did she survive that? Oh wait, she's invincible. Okay, so he locks his arm down and raises up his hand to stab her in the back. Wait, zoom in, enhance, where'd his blade go? This guy literally just does not have a weapon anymore. I guess someone in post realized how stupid it was for him to have a knife in his hand to raise back and him not to do anything about it, that they literally had to edit out his knife. You just can't make this up. If you go back on your own and watch it frame by frame, there's so many moments where you just shake your head and you'll just never see it the same again. There's just too many points of it not making sense and not enough reason for us to care about what happens for this fight to be any good. Snoke's plan was to literally read Rey's mind and then kill her. This fight was meant to be theatrical, but in doing so, they just had so many errors that they just took away any of the wow factor it had the first time we watched it. Rey is invincible. They're digitally removing knives so she can't get hurt. What's the point of some guards even fighting them anymore? I'm gonna put an end card here to subscribe. All you have to do is click this circle. It couldn't be any easier. And comment down below what you guys think about all this and what videos you guys wanna see from me next. Go watch one of these other videos. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And until next Saturday, I will see you in the comments. Peace.